Hello guys, welcome to Mark Trump Tanks. Today we set up a tank for Opa Uli. But before we start, let me quickly go over what I know about these shrimp. They go by various names. Halo Caradina is one of them. Hawaiian Red Shrimp is another one. Uh, what I know about them is they are a brackish to saltwater species of shrimp. So the way I'm going to do this, guys, is we are going to set up this uh, scape with lava rock. I did originally plan to do up the bark on the wall, but I kind of figured that the this might not be the safest option for a glass tank, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go from an angle from the front, from about here, up the wall at the back, right? So half of the tank is going to be lava rock because this is um, a really good media for um, biofilm and bacteria, etc. In the tank also, we're going to have um, a little pump. Now, I know this goes against the grain with um, other Opa Uli breeders that don't have any kind of filtration in their tanks, right? I believe that in nature, right, wind helps to filter uh, pools of water by simply blowing across the top of it and creating currents inside the pool right inside and in a closed system like this we are not going to have this right so it's important that i introduce some kind of circulation next we're into the bacteria we here we have stability from sea chem which is good for salt water and fresh water so this is what we're going to use here we have um, instant ocean aquatic salt here i think I'm going to have to try and guess the dosage in here because it's very confusing for me to try and convert American units of information, like half a cup, as an example, into litres. Okay, so because we don't really go by the term half a cup here in, in Europe, right? So I think I have worked out that it's roughly about 70 grams of salt per four litres of water. Right? And to measure that, we're going to have to use this thing. This is a refractometer. It's the box for it, anyway. Inside is a refractometer in here. I have played a bit with it a little bit and all you do is you add uh, some salt water on the like the little lens part, look through and it tells you the salinity of the water, right? So that's how that works. So the first thing we need to do here is make this safer, right? Because I'm not really comfortable with working with this amount of rock in a glass aquarium, right? So we're going to put this into this bucket and then we're going to put it under here and I'm just going to grab bits and put it in the tank, right? Because I think that will be the safest thing for me to do because I have actually broken tanks before by dropping stones into the glass, accidentally of course. It's a little bit dusty but I think it will be okay because we have decent filtration. I have two bags here which is six kilos. I think I might need a third bag. But let's see how this goes. Quite a bit of dust, who cares, right? So this is the lava rock, it is very, very porous, which means it makes an absolutely awesome filter media, right? So our tank is going to be basically half made of lava rock, so it's going to be its own filter. I'm going to do kind of a handful at a time. I might even do less because I'm a little bit wary of dropping this, as I've said to you before. And it doesn't really need to be uh, like a jigsaw, as long as we get a lot of it. This might take some time, right? So what I think I'll do, guys, is I'll probably fill this. As I said, we're going to fill it at an angle. And then I'll come back to you when it's done. And by the way, I did actually pre-rinse this after seeing how dusty it was. let's add the water. And I'm doing it this way, guys, because I need to know exactly how much water is going in, right? So I'm actually going to use a one-litre jug and measure every a jug full into this tank until it's at least an inch from the top. And the reason I'm doing this as well, guys, right, is because, um, as I said, I need to know how much is, uh, this water holds because the tank itself will have a reduced volume with the amount of lava rock in here, right? I put 12 kilos of lava rock in here, and doesn't that look good? This is going to be a nice looking tank, I think. Right, so once I've filled it up a little bit more, I'll switch the camera back on. You guys can have a look and see for yourself how cool it looks. So the tank is full, or as full as I want it to be. Uh, it takes 36 litres to fill this up with pure RO water. Of course, we're going to add salt to it to make it safe for our Halocaradina Hawaiian red shrimp. And we used 12 kilos of uh, lava rock as well, so that took up a lot of room. That's why the water volume is much lower than it would normally be. Uh, so the next thing we need to do here is add the little filter. I've already put the power on, so this should start working straight away. I probably don't need the sponge on this right now because uh, we're going to be in that mixing 
phase, right? All this pump is going to do is circulate the water because we are actually going to add um, our salts directly to this. Okay, don't ever do that when you have inverts or fish in the tank. Never add your minerals directly to the tank like that, but it's okay to do it in the beginning. So here are our calculations, right? So we have 36 litres divided by four. This is meant to be the equivalent of us uh, dividing this to get our number for gallons. I've just rounded it off to four because it'd be easier to work out which equals nine so that's nine times the amount that we need per gallon right so that's per gallon which is four liters for us i know it's 3.8 liters or something in america but this is i'm just trying to do this roughly guys right because and we'll be able to add or subtract with this with uh, simply by adding things like more salt or removing some water and adding ro water right so this is the rough calculation for the volume that we need volume of salt that is right so here is our we think I'm a jig set up here. Let's uh, get this thing on. You're working. Tear it because we need 630 grams of salt. 630. Right. So uh, salt is quite heavy. So I would imagine it, it wouldn't be uh, so much. I imagine it's going to be just over half of this bag. 630. Maybe more than what I can put in this little jug. Actually. Let's see. It's going to be topped up really high, I think. Oh, maybe we might get lucky with this. This is, to me, it looks like an awful lot of salt, but this is what salt water is like. 630, we said. Come on. A little bit more. We're so close. 615. Come on. 636. Keep on going up. Jesus. Right, 636. Let's take a little bit off. Right, we're actually going to dump the salt straight into the tank. And the reason I'm doing that, guys, is because um, nothing will be going in this tank for literally for three weeks at least. Three, four weeks at least, right? Because that is how long we will have to wait before we can order the shrimp. Three weeks, order the shrimp. The shrimp come within a week or two. There's a setup time of probably five to six weeks, but I think it's fine for this type of tank. All right, so the next thing we've got to do is add a lovely salt mix to this war, right? Let me see. Can I get it up there? Oh just fits in. I'm just going to lightly spread this across the tank and this will dissolve as I said over the course of a few weeks. While I'm doing this guys as well I think I should also mention uh, the light here. This is a Chisora light and the reason it's on this tank guys is because um, I did notice with this light before it, it produces a lot of algae right and that's what we need for this type of rock pool environment. We need lots and lots of algae. I want algae covering all these rocks right so that's why we chose this light. I'm actually going to buy another light for the tank behind it because that's where that one came from. But this one will be more suited for this, right? So um, just to sidetrack a tiny little bit, this next tank here is going to be a Sulawesi tank. And that's why this light is here as well because Sulawesi shrimp like a lot of light, hotter temperatures, etc. right? So this is perfect for this setup. Let's get this salt in. And what I think I'll do as well, guys, right, is I'll uh, come back probably tomorrow and we'll have a look at how this has turned out right because the water is kind of cloudy from the lava rock as well to me that seems like an awful lot of salt doesn't it but it is what it is that's how much it is to make instant ocean okay so next uh, we should really add like a bacteria to this as well right and as I said I've chosen uh, stability because it's good for salt water as well let me see what does it say in the instructions direction shake well before use one cup full, five mil for each 40 litres of water on the first day. Then we use one cup full, 80 litres of water for seven days. Right, so this is like five, ten mil in the beginning, I think. So that's what we're going to add now, right? And this contains all different types of bacteria, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. So we're going to just put two cups in here. Why not? If in doubt, I mean, you can never add too much bacteria in the beginning. Right, so this is all fine and dandy, right? but we are missing one key ingredient as well, which I'm going to show you in a second. Up next, guys, is a food source. This is NutriDust and from Pure Nordic. I'm not deliberately showing you this for any other reason other than this is an awesome food for making biofilm, right? This tank, without any food going into it, would just wouldn't start. It wouldn't start to cycle. Right, so um, you would add your bacteria and then you have to give them a food source to feed on, right? So this is going to be the food source. We're just going to put in a couple of heaped 
little spoons of this in here and it doesn't matter in the beginning if you put too much in because um, your, your tank needs food right so we're going to put three heap spoonfuls in here and that will sink this will all get mixed up within a day or two I'd imagine that we would start to see some biofilm on the sides all this salt will disappear and the tank will start to clear right and I'll show you that in one momento okay it is day number two this is what it looks like it's looking quite clear actually you can see some dust on the sides from the lava rock all the salt as far as I can see has completely disappeared which is good uh, we've added a sponge in here this is something I put on before I've actually recorded this already and I forgot to put the sound on so this is me redoing this part of the video okay so uh, temperature wise this is uh, 22 degrees Celsius the salinity as this you can see here the density between 1000 and 1024 is optimal I'm um, at 1010 right and I'll put an image up right now of what this water is this is an image I took earlier on but let us quickly go over what this refractometer actually looks like because I can't actually show you the reading on this because it is um, very hard for me to see through I couldn't possibly film it with the GoPro right so I just want to show you guys how to do this this is your refractometer I have a lens at the front here you put a big blob of water on the top like this slowly close the lens so it doesn't splash up all over the place and you'll end up like something like this right? I'll try and tilt this so you can see right? and then you would look through this part of the device here I'm not sure if you're actually going to be able to see anything at all in there right but um, I have already taken a photo of this reading and we'll put it up as a macro image right now right? so that is how you get the salinity in guys wasn't it good for the very first time doing this uh, the 70 grams of salt per 4 litres of water gave me almost exactly 110 uh, density which was awesome first time ever doing this perfect water conditions right so for this now we only have to uh, leave this for at least three or four weeks to let it cycle and um, I'm going to continue to add uh, food to it as well um, and then we're looking for things like algae growth biofilm growth welcome back guys it has been exactly 14 days since we set up this tank and uh, wouldn't you say it's looking really 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 nice with the amount of algae that's built up and what I must point out here guys as well is this algae didn't just happen overnight right for the first at least first eight days this tank didn't look like anything was happening with it right and then all of a sudden it started to get a little bit of algae and then a little bit more and um, I think I'm probably going to have to start to cut back the lights now because it is starting to produce string algae as well across the tank which I don't want right but that's something that we could easily clean um, every so often when we need to today's video or today's part of this video is going to be about us doing its first water change right because I'm not going to be uh, doing massive water changes with this tank either so the plan is for us to drain this tank 10% which is only 4 litres of water and then we're going to add our fresh water back in and then we're going to add our salt mix back to the tank as well let me quickly go over here so I could just show you this right because we do not have any shrimp in this tank yet we can put our water straight in as it is and our salt in separately right so don't ever do this when there's shrimp in the tank is, is what I'm trying to say right so uh, the first thing we have to do is come over here we have to take out four layers of water right so this is really hard for me to film because I can't exactly see what you see because you're actually on my chest right so I'm going to start a siphon and we're going to take out four layers of water into the bucket it goes will it work first time please we're we're filming it's struggling no there you go that water is very salty right so I have in this bucket just Pointing to where my finger is there you can see four layers it's not very much but that's all we're going to need to change in here and we could probably if I can get this down near the bottom just see if there's any gunk lying here because you can do that with this type of thing this type of uh, siphon head filter I don't know what you want to call this is a DIY right th so that is four liters already that was fast and what else we're going to do is we're going to remove the sponge and we're going to give it a clean this is something I like to do just every so often let us get this stuff out of the way here let's have a little look at the water looks okay looks doesn't look yeah it does when you come over here in the light you can see it's a little bit green so that's what we want because this is an upper early tank and most shrimp tanks guys you will want algae in the tank right so let's take off this little filter I'm going to cup it with my hand 
just let most of the water drain out here. And you can see how slow this is. This is perfect for this type of tank. Please don't spill much, Mark. And then uh, we are going to give this a gentle squeeze in here. Just get anything out of the sponge because we want the water to be as clean as possible. Now I know these, these uh, shrimp, they live in pools in Hawaii where uh, there's like no filtration and stuff. But in a, an enclosed system like I've talked to you guys about before, we should really provide some kind of surface movement. Right, That's important because surface movement also uh, puts oxygen into the water. Right, so you can see there's, there's, it's not dirty dirty because there's, I've not been feeding it as much as I should have. Because there's no shrimp in the tank. But there is something in there, right? So our filtration has started. I would reckon, guys, as well, within within a week, I'll probably order the shrimp because this tank, I would say, is almost ready. Right, so it's looking good, don't you think? Right, so we have um, our soil here. As I said to you guys before, my soil, if you guys can see, this is 70 grams, right? And we're doing 70 grams of salt per four liters of water and that gives me the perfect density for Opa'ule, right? So there's no shrimp in here again as I said so the, the salt can go straight in the tank and this will dissolve pretty fast. I noticed it was gone the same day, right? So and then we have our four liters of water. Now this might be a little bit awkward. Can we pour it? I don't think we can pour it straight in right? so we're gonna to have to do it over here. Let me quickly get a towel. We're going to put our four litres of water in the tank, just to top it up. And talking of top ups as well, that is the only thing I have done with this. I have topped it up twice with fresh arrow water, just to keep the water volume up in the tank, right? So I like this effect that you see when you have um, fresh water mixing with saline water. There's kind of like a blurriness in the water, is it? Looks rather good. Welcome back, guys. It has been what, five six weeks since our last clip of this video and we've added some Cheeto algae to the tank the good news is the shrimp are actually here right, and I'm gonna actually unbox them right now in front of you right but I just want to say guys as well the reason that the box is open is because um, customs had to open it and they had to rebox the items because the box was damaged okay so that's the only reason it's open because I have to check to see if everything's okay in the box but I'm gonna let you see What's like inside? So the moment of truth. Let's see. This box is in very good condition. I actually couldn't see anything wrong with the box that was damaged. So take them that way you will. I think customs just wanted to open it to see what was inside. Right, and, it, and it, so far it looks good in here. I can see. I can actually see the Hawaiian red shrimp swimming around. I can't see that there's ten though. Maybe they're in a crease or hanging on to the little bit of sponge that's in there. Let's grab a bucket. Let's get this bag open. Yeah, the bag is wet. I can feel it actually. This is probably why customs had to open it because the, the bag was leaking. Okay, so we have a, a bucket here. Where's my scissors? We're going to open this bag together. And we're going to have a look at them. Right, and th these guys are absolutely tiny i'm not sure you're even going to be able to see them on the camera tiny little things and we're going to drip these guys for a few hours as well because i am aware that these have been in the post a little bit longer than normal um it's not necessarily longer for a lot of you guys but for me uh they have been in, in shipping for something like 12 days right and to me that is long the longest i've ever shipped shrimp was 12 days right so it just goes to show and I'm, I'm going to have to be very wary here. I may have to actually... Is this double bagged? Yes, it is. Let's remove the outer bag first. It feels like it's double bagged. See the, see the second bag? See how much water is leaking there? So it's probably been the inner bag that's leaked into the second bag. Or both of them have actually leaked, right? So I'll have to contact the seller because I was charged for it. This is what happens in Norway. You get charged... Uh, for stuff like this if the box leaks. Right, so let's get these guys in here. I'm gonna give I'm gonna hold the bag kind of open as I'm doing this as well because I want no air. I don't want there to be a suction in this guys where the shrimp get caught in a corner because of a vacuum. 
red Hawaiian shrimp, right? So I can see there's some kind of coral here. We want all that good stuff in the tag. This will be probably one of the few times that you will see me putting something from a bag into a shrimp tag. That looks like duckweed. Hmm. Be interesting if it was duck duckweed. Salt water duckweed, right? So I'm pretty confident. Check in the bag. Let's have a look at this shrimp. Let's pull this out here. You have to watch with sponge as well because I've actually had it before where the shrimp will go into the sponge. This sponge looks pretty fine though, so I don't think there will be. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Is that 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, he gave me one extra. Right, so what we're going to do with these guys is we're going to drip them for a few hours. I'll leave that in here. Um, and it's basically to get the temperature up for these shrimp, right? Because my room is... Right now it's about 23 degrees Celsius in here, and that water, let's have a little measure and see. We might also do another test here with the refractometer, just to see what the salani is on this. Not much that we can do about it now, but just to give you a rough idea of what it is. So that is 21, it's going down. Going down right. So the, these Hawaiian red shrimp are very, very hardy as well. So 20 degrees, still dropping. Right. So we'll have to drip these for a little while. I don't want to shock them by putting them in a warm tank straight away. Right. So um, that's what you'll see next, I suppose. Let's get these guys over here. I've already set up the drip acclimator. It's a little bit dark over here, but this is where they're going to be drip acclimated. Just to give you guys an idea. Right. The, the drip acclimator is already in the tank. I'm just going to open the valve, I'm going to suck on it to get the water into it. You can probably see it rushing down there. Right, and then we're going to do, you can see the, the drip here, a reasonably fast drip, two, three, four drips a second. Okay, these have been dripping for three hours. I've removed the hose just to make it easier for us to get the shrimp out like this. And let's have a little look. I counted the shrimp in here earlier and there was 11 as we said before right so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to transfer these shrimp to this container here we're going to use some of the water and normally I wouldn't do this with fresh water uh, where uh, we use the water that came out of the bag but it's a little bit different because these shrimp will never be going in any other tank right they, they are a salt water brackish tank so uh, there's no danger of cross-contamination anything like that right so i'm just going to put in a couple of hundred mil of this water here and anyway guys if there's things like microorganisms and stuff in here i want this to go in the tank right i want something from where they've come from to go into the tank right i'm going to actually put this little bit of sponge into the uh plastic container as well just because uh, sometimes when you have uh, this type of shrimp the the larva are tiny, really, really small, right? and they can get stuck in things like a sponge like this, right? This is something that we will have to be aware of. With our filter in this tank, and I will talk about that briefly in a second, right? So let's catch these guys. Red Hawaiian shrimp. They are pretty fast little buggers. How can I do this so you can see a wee bit better? Let's actually put that in last, right, so you can see them in the container. They look kind of like a tiny cherry shrimp tiny tiny cherry shrimp right so uh, these guys do get a little bit bigger than this so these are still young fellas let's put them in let's just be careful when you're pushing the net inside out that you don't break the shrimp you don't cut the wee buggers in half and uh, when I'm doing this as well guys I will I take macro photos of the tank after right because you'll see me putting them in now and then you won't see these guys again until we do an update, like in a month or so. Right? But I want you guys today to see what they look like in the tank, right? So I'll also do some macro photos I'll add on near the end of the video. Get in here. Three. I think we counted 11 shrimp. 11 red Hawaiian shrimp. Let's see, what are the what's the name called on the website? Red Hawaiian Garnelin. Let me see, Rot Hawaiian Garnelin. I think it was. 
Right, so these guys will be awesome in here. I think that is all of them. I'm going to take the little bit of uh, sponge, as I said, just in case there is any little baby shrimp stuck in them. I'll, of course, check in here again. And we'll get all these little white bits. I think this white stuff might be, it's either coral gravel or it could be zeolite. It's quite common for shippers to put zeolite in a bag because it helps absorb ammonia and stuff. Alright, so we'll put that in there as well. Okay, we have the macro camera ready and on the go. It's almost ready just to press the button and record it. I'll do that right now before we put the shrimp in because I think I forgot the last time in one of my videos, right? So we're pressing record. Let's grab the shrimp. My apologies if you don't see everything. It's really, really hard to try and uh, do all this with one hand while filming, right? So with a little bit of luck, we should get some of these uh, shrimp on camera leaving. Now I can see this already focusing on the background. I'm trying not to shake at all. I see a couple going out here. And as I said guys, I will take better pictures of this uh, once the shrimp are in the tank. You know once they're settled in and they're close to the edges and stuff, I'll, I'll take some some uh, macro photos of them just to give you an idea of what they look like. They're quite a unique little shrimp. They kind of look like cherries but they have uh, very small eyes, right? So. I think that is all of them. A couple of them stuck to the sponge. You see it? Let me quickly rinse this out. And there you go. Let's see, is there any near the front that we can probably, possibly, not probably, have a wee zoom in on? It's want to. It's want to focus on the bark instead of the shrimp. You see? You see them in the bark. This is what we've got to look forward to. Let me quickly just turn it off so we can talk about something else. Um. This time, guys, as well, there's something else I wanted to tell you was uh, I'm not still not convinced with the filter that we're going to go 100% with the filter because the larval stage of these shrimp can be sucked into filters, even fine uh, meshed filters, right? So this was the plan to go with this Cheeto algae here. And the plan is for this Cheeto algae to become the filter in the tank, right? And combined with all this lava rock here, the algae will help to put... Um, oxygen back into the water will help to clean the water right so this is the goal is to go macroalgae to build up in quite a, a lot of numbers in a, in a big amount I mean and then to hopefully to remove this filter because I want this to be a natural looking tank where there is no filter because in nature there is no filter in the little ponds but they do have some surface movement right so we may add a near stone we shall see uh, but let's see. Let's see what happens with this because I think it's going to look pretty awesome. And um, I've seen videos on YouTube where the guys have done this very similar setups to mine. And they've had thousands of shrimp over the course of a year, right? So that's what we've got to Hello look guys, forward to. guys, welcome. This is um, a few months later. I just want to show you the progress of the tank. As you can see, the Chio algae is still in here, but it has a lot of uh, string algae around it. The shrimp are very, very healthy, right? I'll sh pop up some macro shots of the shrimp for you to see. Um, a lot of them have uh, quite large saddles and they will probably start to breed soon because I can see the shrimp here but you probably can't make it out on this uh, camera. Right, let's quickly go over to um, upkeep. Um, I do no water changes in this tank. This only gets top ups with uh, minimal amounts of um, RO water. So that's like today, like this is for example, this has dropped maybe a centimetre. I would fill this up with like half a litre of water and that is it. This is like once a week or something. I wish you could see these guys because they're so beautiful. Um, filtration is a sponge filter. This is on low, but I have the output part of it very high, right? So there's minimal water disturbance. And this is probably quite important when you have uh, larvae. Okay, uh, what else is the feeding? I feed every other day an algae-based food like this. This is a spirulina-based powder. And all I add, guys, is a match head every second day. See, this is all it is, a match head. Right, and it, it looks like it's hardly anything in this tank, right? But I, I've actually seen people do tanks like this where they don't really feed the tank at all. Right, but I like to give them a little bit of um, high protein powder. So that's all there is to keeping an Opoula tank. This is video has actually taken me quite a while to make because um, the shrimp themselves, depending on the stage of their development when you buy them, uh, you will get different results in regards to how active they are, right? So a good uh, rule of thumb with this is if you buy smallish ones that are kind of clear and white, 
when you add them to your tank, don't be disappointed if you don't see them at all for weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months. Okay, because that is quite normal. I think that part of their development means that they're quite... Uh, they, it's almost like they feel like they're quite vulnerable, so they hide more. Uh, they're much smaller, smaller shrimp. Uh, some of the ones in here are almost like... Uh, let me see, 1.25 centimeters, 1.5 centimeters. And when they get a little bit larger, they become quite red. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. Healthy, healthy shrimp. Obviously, I'm going to add macro footage here so you can see that as well. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give me a massive, massive thumbs up for making uh, this video over a couple of months. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy shrimp game, guys. Bye. Whoop.